Welcome back with a smiling face. Links to previous episodes are given in the video description, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. Beyond the Red River Episode 3 Chapter 14 Lauren's Point of View When I wake up in the morning, it's early but Julian isn't here. He must have gone home with a woman last night. I decided to get up and get ready. He'll probably be here soon, and he'll be starving. I put some leggings, and a tank top on because I know he wanted to check out the gym here. I get started making bacon, eggs, and toast and on schedule with his stomach, I hear my door unlocking. Hey! I'm so happy you're cooking. I'm starving. He groans. Did you work up an appetite on that walk of shame? I smiled. It was all for the cause. I have a story now, even some pictures. So, you're saying you slept with someone for me and my safety? You are so thoughtful. How did I get so lucky to get such a selfless brother, I joke, and Julian just laughs. Jim after Breaky? He asks. Yes. I know you said you had to leave today but after the gym, we should shift and go for a run. I haven't shifted in a few weeks, and it's starting to get to me, I admit. Sure. Sounds good. Hey, did you know Zach offered me a place in his pack? Mom too. He did? When? Yesterday when you started work. I told him how much I hated Nathan, and he offered for us to move here he explains. Of course, he did. He's so sweet. I'm crazy about him. Ugh, I miss him already. What did you say? I said thanks, and I'd probably take him up on it. I want to head back for a while, I want to be able to have eyes and ears on Nathan until he's moved on from you, he admits. It brings me so much joy to think about the possibility of my brother and mom being so close. The gym was fun with Julian. We always have fun together, and we're great at pushing each other. I thought Mark was going to completely drop wanting to talk to me, after he found out I was with Zach, but he still asked to talk to me in his office. He told me that he was going to ask me on a date before he found out about Zach and me. Still, he wanted me to keep him in mind if things didn't work out between us. As a human, he probably thinks just days into our relationship that there is a very high likelihood that Zack and I will break up, but things are different with werewolves. When we commit, we tend to commit for life. I just smiled and nodded awkwardly and got out of there as quickly as possible. When we get back to my place, we leave everything in Julian's car and head straight to the bush behind Peggy's. We shift, me into my grey wolf and Julian into his black wolf with white paws. He's quite a bit bigger than I am. We explore the forest for a few hours, chasing rabbits and squirrels. We also enjoy the views from mountain tops, and even jumped into a freezing cold river. Jumping into the river this time of year wasn't the best idea so we finally decide to head straight back towards Peggy's and our clothes, because we're freezing. When we're dressed, we continue on home back to Peggy's with blue lips, and rosy pink cheeks and noses. The first one to get to your door gets the shower first, Julian says, and takes off running. I know he's going to beat me, but I can't resist the challenge. I take off after him but as soon as we make it out of the bush I can see guys everywhere behind Peggy's, and my apartment door is open. Julian and I both stop dead in our tracks. Is Nathan here? Before I have time to panic, I see Zach pacing. Zach, I yell. Lauren. He says and starts jogging over to me. Where were you? He asks. We were out for a run. What's going on? Why are there people inside my apartment? I ask. 
I haven't heard from you since last night. It's 4 p.m. I've been trying to get a hold of you all day, I thought Nathan. I was worried. Both of your vehicles were here, and you had left your wallet and your phone in Julian's car. It seemed like you must have left quickly. I thought you wouldn't go anywhere without it, and I was looking for clues in your apartment. I thought the worst, he admits as he rests his forehead on mine. Lauren's the worst with her phone, she always forgets it at home or in her car, or at work, Julian admits. I really am the worst. Remember I even lost it when I went to visit your pack yesterday. I left my phone in Julian's car this morning on the way to the gym. I forgot I even brought it with me actually, and as soon as we got back we shifted and went for a run. I'm okay. Freezing, but okay. I'm sorry you were worried, I frown. You are freezing, why are you so cold? He asks, brows furrowed, and rubbing his hands on my arms to warm me up. We went swimming in a river, I admit. It's October. You're crazy. It wasn't my idea, I fib. Yes, it was. Julian says, annoyed. Okay, maybe it was my idea, I admit, with a chuckle. I give Zach a quick peck, and start to run, catching Julian off guard and getting a head start. Lauren. Zach calls. You're cheating Lauren. Julian yells. By the time I get to the stairs, Julian has caught up to me. No. I squeal while laughing. Julian, you're cheating. I laugh, while he lifts me up, and places me behind him. I am literally half his size, so if he wants to pick me up, there's nothing I can do. I see Malcolm and Paul coming out of my apartment. Don't let him touch my door guys, I holler. The good men that Paul and Malcolm are, they hold him back, and I run up past him and touch the door. Ha! Huh. I beat you fair and square. I laugh. Julian's shaking his head at me. Fair and square, how was that fair? He rolls his eyes. Thank you, gentlemen. I say and pat their shoulders. What's going on? Zach laughs. I won the race fair and square, so I get the hot shower first now, I beam. You're too cute, Zach smiles. My cheeks are hurting I'm smiling so hard, I start to move towards him. If you're first for the shower, stop flirting and go. I'm freezing low, Julian complains. Fine, I roll my eyes. I run inside, grab a change of clothes, and turn the shower on nice and hot. It feels so good. Lauren. Julian whines at the door. I ignore him and continue to rinse the soap off my body. He was being so impatient, I've been in here for less than ten minutes. I hurry and finish though because I do feel bad for him. I dry off and get dressed in a thick grey turtleneck sweater and some jeans. I step out of my bathroom and Julian jumps out of my bed and runs into it. Zach's sitting at my little table, smiling at me. That smile. Ugh. Is the SWAT team gone home? I ask with a smirk. He lets out a beautiful laugh and nods. He opens his arms to me, and I make my way over and sit on his lap. I'm sorry that I worried you, I say sincerely. It's not your fault. It's just with your past, it was hard for my mind to not go into panic mode when I didn't hear from you all day. I texted you at 10 a.m., and then when I didn't hear from you for a while, I tried calling. Then I came here, and when I saw the cars were here, I waited. I had checked at the gym, and with Peggy, and I was so worried that I called my guys down. I even called my friend Jack and asked him to send his best tracker down. I was so worried, he says, as he buries his face into my neck. 
His warm breath against my marking spot is very arousing. Zack, I say quietly, trying to control my breathing. Keep it together, your brother is in the next room, I tell myself. I pull away. He looks into my eyes. Lauren. You're killing me, he groans. Your eyes, your scent. Your arousal is intoxicating, his deep voice growls. My eyes. I question. They're black, he says while taking a sharp breath. You need to stay away from my neck then. It's my weak spot, I admit quietly. It hasn't always been, but with you, it is. He smiles proudly, it's because that's my spot, he says possessively, as he grazes his fingertips in the spot where he will one day mark me. The sensation of his touch on my sensitive spot, mixed with his possessive claim, affected me in a powerful way, and a small moan left my mouth. He puts his forehead to mine, and I can feel he's breathing heavy. I need to get out of here baby, he says in a deep husky voice. He gets up, and places me in the chair he was sitting in, kisses my forehead and leaves. I'm left in the chair, thinking about how badly I want Zack. If he's not my fated mate, I don't think my heart could take anything more intense than this. He has all my senses on high alert, and it feels good. I am pulled out of my thoughts about Zack when I hear Julian ask, where did Zack go? Um. He went home. I think. He furrows his brow in confusion. Well, things were getting out of hand and he needed to get out of here quickly. Sorry, TMI, I smirk. Julian just shakes his head. I'm grossed out, but at the same time I am actually really happy for you Lo. Thanks. I can't believe this is happening. It's not what I expected but it feels so right, I admit. We both get ready, and then head out to Pop's diner, for an early dinner, because I work tonight. Peggy said I could come in at 7 tonight since my brother is in town. Just as we're finishing up eating, my phone dings. Zack slayed me, haha. It's fine. It was my fault. I'm sorry. Zack slayed me. I get it. It could have gotten awkward really quickly lol Zack slayed me, I work at 7 tonight. I'm just finishing up dinner with Julian now, but I'll be headed home soon. I'll let you know when I'm headed home, and you can meet me there if you want. Zack slayed dinner was great. Just before 6 pm, Julian says he needs to take off and make it a few hours further to be able to give an update to Alpha. We brought separate cars because I knew he was going to be leaving right after dinner. I give Julian a big hug and tell him how much I love him and how much I am going to miss him. It's hard to see him go, but I am glad that he is planning on moving here soon enough. We're less than two years apart, so we've always been close and good friends since we were little. I wave him goodbye and then send Zach a quick text before I head home. Chapter 15 Zack's point of view when I get to Lauren's place, we sit at her kitchen table, and I take her brother's advice, again. Now that Julian's gone, I think it's safest for you to come and live at the pack house, I state. I really like my cute little place. I know. I just want you to be safe, and I'll worry so much if you're here. What if Nathan shows up and takes you and I'm 15 minutes away, completely unaware? Look at today, if he would have taken you last night, he could have had you back at your old pack all by morning. I can't protect you if I'm away from you, and I have to protect you. You can have your own room in my alpha suite. It has four bedrooms, pick any one you want, even take mine and I'll sleep in a guest room. You could have a room in the pack house, out of the alpha suite if you prefer. Whatever you want. I just can't bear to even think about what I would do if something bad happened to you, I frown. She frowns too. 
I don't want you to worry, she says, and I grab her hand and my thumb grazes her knuckles. Please, Lauren. I ask. I hate to pull at her heartstrings like that, but what would I do without her? I love her. I haven't told her yet, but I do. She looks into my eyes, and I know she can feel my sincerity. She nods. Okay, I don't want you to worry, she agrees. I can't help but smile. I love that she cares so much about how I feel. I've never met a better person. She pulls my hand to her lips and gives it a kiss. Even though I feel fine and safe here, I really appreciate that you care so much about me, she smiles. I get up and pull her into a hug. I won't pack everything, because I might be fine to come back in a week after the full moon, she says. I just smile and nod. If I had anything to say about it, she'd never move back here. Hopefully, by the time this whole thing is over, she'll want to stay with me. I help her pack up one large suitcase, and she grabs a pillow and states that that's everything. I grabbed her bag for her and put it in my vehicle. I'll pick you up after work, okay? She nods, and smiles, thank you. It's my pleasure, babe. I walk her into Peggy's just before 7 p.m. and give her a kiss goodbye. I showed up at 12.30 a.m., to pick her up in case she gets off early, I didn't want her waiting around. Peggy greets me first. Hey, darling. You're coming in late. It's almost closing time, she says. Hey, Peggy. I'm just coming to pick up Lauren, I explain. Hmm. I see. Well. I'm glad things are going well with you too. Can I get you a drink? She asks. No thanks. I'm good. Yeah, things are going really well, I smile. How's your brother? He's doing well after his surgery this morning. What a scare he gave us though. He's going to have to make a lot of changes, and he's a stubborn bastard so it's not going to be easy for him or his wife, she explains. I feel arms on my shoulders, and then Lauren leans in to kiss my cheek. Hey, handsome, she smiles. Hey, babe. How was your night? I ask. It's been good. It was super busy earlier. Did you want a drink, she asks. I beat you to it, darling. Peggy says. Lauren works until a little after 1 a.m. before she's finished. On the way to the pack house, I asked her what she would be most comfortable with in terms of living situations. I'd prefer if you choose a room on the fourth floor, in the Alpha Suite with me, but if you prefer you can have a room on the third floor of the pack house with other members, I ask. I hold my breath waiting for her to answer. I really want her with me. Are you sure you want me to stay with you? She asks. Yeah, I'm sure, I smile, trying not to laugh. If she only knew. Okay, well I'd prefer to be close to you, she admits. Yes. Music to my ears. What do you tell your pack though? She asks. I'll make an announcement tomorrow that you're my mate, I admit. What if that's a lie? What if I'm not, she questions. I don't care if it's a lie. If you do though, then I can just refer to you as my woman, or I can just tell everyone I found their future Luna. I question. She smiles, I don't really know. It's your pack, why don't you tell them whatever you're comfortable with, she reasons. It'll be our pack soon enough. Wait, so this means you're going to be a member of my pack, I state. She smiles and nods. I feel so proud, and I'm beaming. Can I make it official tonight? I ask. Sure, she nods. 
As soon as we cross my pack border, I pull over. As Alpha of Red River Pack, I extend an invitation to you, Lauren Crane, to join my pack. Do you accept Red River as your pack? I ask. I do. I Lauren Crane accept Red River as my one and only pack. I pledge my loyalty always, she answers and reaches out for my hand. I give it a kiss, but I want to do so much more. She stares into my eyes lovingly, and I can't resist. I move into her. I put my hand on her face and lean in for a quick chaste kiss. I'm so happy, and so proud, I whisper. I kiss her forehead and then pull away. Lauren's point of view Zach grabs my large suitcase and carries it up to his alpha suite, which is essentially a very large four-bedroom apartment. It's nearly the entire top floor of the pack house, except for Zach's office. I don't know why, but I was expecting there to be a lot of brown wood, and dark walls. Very rustic, but I was wrong. The walls are white, or light neutrals. The light wood floors run through most of the place, giving it a light and airy feel. The lighter accents make the place feel very bright and welcoming, even with some of the darker tones. Like the kitchen is beautiful with black cabinetry, but it has white and grey marble countertops and stainless steel appliances. There are also large patio doors leading to a large patio area off of the dining room. The living room has a large white sectional couch with a distressed black coffee table and a large TV stand, that has a large TV. The large TV doesn't surprise me one bit. There's a perfect light blue cozy chair too. For some reason, I pictured his place looking like it was designed by a lumberjack. I've never seen him wear plaid or anything, so I don't know where that thought came from. Maybe it's the facial hair? Your place is beautiful. I don't know why but I was expecting something, different, I admit. He smiles. Like what? Maybe more log cabin vibe, I admit. He furrows his brows and laughs. Zach shows me all four bedrooms and tells me to choose one. I like Zach's room best, it smells like him so much. Your bedroom is probably bigger than my whole apartment, I laugh. It has white walls, with an accent wall, that had light grey distressed wood. It has a large black upholstered king-sized bed, with white bedding, and it looks so comfortable. He has a huge master bathroom with beautiful marble tiles, glass doors, fancy shower heads, and a huge soaker tub. It has two walk-in closets and the bigger one is empty, which made me smile. I know it's not a good idea for us to share a room, and I won't make him move rooms, so I pick the closest room to his. It has a queen-sized bed and all lighter furniture. It also has a TV, a beautiful and sweet bathroom, and a walk-in closet. Zach puts my suitcase in the closet for me. I'll let you get settled, and get to bed. It's late, you must be exhausted. Okay. Thank you, I smile. Can I get you anything before I go? Drink? Snack? He asks. I shake my head. Well, you know where the kitchen is, help yourself. This is your house too, okay? He says, brows raised, waiting for me to agree. I can't help but smile. Okay, thanks. We hug for a minute and then say good night. I quickly unpack my stuff, and I check the clock, it's almost 2 a.m. now. I grab a glass of water and then get my PJs on. I put some comfy shorts on and a t-shirt, and crawl into my bed. It's so comfortable, with all the feather pillows, throw pillows, and feathered uve. It's like laying on a cloud. I couldn't help but moan when I first laid down. I woke up, and the clock says 8.07 am. I slept so well in this bed, I think it helps that Zach's scent is everywhere in this house.
I love it. I had the best dream last night too, I was dreaming that Zack and I were on the couch watching a movie. We started kissing, and then things got heated. He climbed on top of me, and his hands started to roam my body. Our make-out session soon turned to more, and we were eventually going at it on the couch. It was so hot. I've thought about X before, and wanted it, even came close once, but I couldn't go through with it. I just couldn't. I wanted to save that for my mate. I care about Zack more than I have about anyone, and I've never wanted it as badly as I do with him. Is this what it feels like to be a teenage boy? It's always on my mind now. The dream was so amazing, and it only makes me want Zack even more. I'm left with a throbbing ache between my thighs. I just want to walk into his room, and crawl into his bed, and attack him. I move my hand under the blankets, and I close my eyes as my hand glides down my stomach. I imagine that it's Zack's hand that's touching me, and how it would feel if he were with me. I move underneath my shorts, and into my panties. I start to rub circles, and it feels so good. It's relieving some of the throbbing ache I have down there. I'm careful not to make a sound, the last thing I want is for Zack to hear me. I am breathing heavier, though. I picture Zack's body on top of me and pushing into me, and I imagine the way he would make me feel, I can feel my body is building up closer and closer. Knock knock. I gasp, and I whip my hand out of my panties. I'm filled with panic. Does he know? I jump out of bed and take a quick look in the mirror. My cheeks are flushed, and my hair is a little messy. I quickly straighten my hair a little and decide that I have got to accept the flush cheeks. I open the door to Zack's smiling face, holding two coffees. Good morning, beautiful, he beams. Good morning, I smile as I look him up and down. Maybe it's because my head was just in the gutter, but I can't help but drink up his appearance. He's in a grey t-shirt that's really working for him. It's tight around his arms and shoulders, and he's wearing darker grey sweatpants. How does he look this good in sweats? You done checking me out? Zack smirks. No. Turn around, let me see the tush. I smile. If I'm caught, I might as well own it. He chuckles and turns around. Very nice, I admit, with a smirk. He turns back around, and his deep laugh fills the room. Nothing in this world sounds better than him laughing like that. He leans in to kiss me, but pauses, and kisses my cheek. I open my door all the way and accept the coffee and make my way inside my room, to sit on my bed. Zack leans into the door frame, do you have anything planned today, he asks. Nothing set in stone, maybe hit the gym after. What about you? I ask. I was hoping this afternoon we could shift and go for a run. I think it would be good for our wolves, he says. That sounds fun, I admit. When we go down for breakfast, I want to make an announcement about us, he says. I nod, smile and pat the bed. He starts to make his way closer to me, and when he gets just a few feet away from me, he stops. His eyes close and he takes a deep breath. He lets out a groan and then starts to back up. What are you doing? I ask, brows furrowed. No. It's not, a good idea. Crack a window, I'm going for a cold shower, he says with a huskier voice. My cheeks are instantly on fire, and my hands move up to my cheeks to hide them. The last time he told me to crack a window, it was because he could smell my arousal. I don't know what you're talking about, I say trying to feign innocence. I didn't even think that he'd be able to smell it. I can't. I'm so embarrassed, that I don't know what to do with myself. 
I open the window and hop in the shower. While I'm in the shower, it crosses my mind that Zack might be, releasing some tension in the shower. I shouldn't be thinking about him much. It's almost pathetic, but I smell him everywhere in this house. The throbbing between my legs is even worse after thinking about Zack in the shower, water running down his gorgeous body, while he strokes himself. I had to release some tension, or I felt like I'd burst. I brace myself against the wall with one hand, and I lift one leg on the shower bench and go ahead to touch myself, thinking of Zack the entire time. When I get out, I do feel better, I'm not sated, but that definitely helped. I put on some black distressed skinny jeans with an off-the-shoulder loose grey sweater. I put my hair in a bun, add a little makeup and perfume and leave my room to find Zack. Zack is sitting at the island, with his phone in his hand. He looks up and smiles when I walk into the room. You're so beautiful, he says while watching me, as I take a seat next to him. I lean in to cuddle him. Thank you. I pause, was this a bad idea? I ask. What? Me living with you? No. It's not a bad idea. It's a great idea. Why would you say that? He asks, as he looks at me, puzzled. Well, it's hard to be in your house, and have your scent everywhere and not, be affected by your presence, and then you have to deal with my scent, which doesn't help you. You'll need to have a cold shower, and then I will too just thinking about what you're doing in your shower. It's a vicious cycle, I add. I'm a little embarrassed, but I feel shockingly comfortable talking about this stuff with him. I also do feel like I needed to address this, I don't want Zack regretting our living situation. Zack is just grinning ear to ear at me. He pulls me close and gives me a very quick peck. It sucks that we have to stay away from each other for a while, but it also feels really good to hear, and smell that you want me as much as I want you. Plus, I love that you're here, he smiles. It just might be easier if I move into a room out of your alpha suite, I offer. He just smiles flirtatiously and shakes his head no. Well, I'll try to be more discreet, I'll crack a window and stick to the shower if I need to, you know. That way it's hopefully contained to one small room. He groans. Did you just... In the shower. He asks, his face etched with pain. Pfft. No, no. I say, and not very convincingly, obviously, because Zack just rubs his face, and groans again. Now every time I hear your shower going, I'm going to wonder what's happening in there, he adds. Sorry, probably nothing. Probably just showering. I add with a chuckle. I change the subject, and after a few minutes of talking about what exactly Zack plans to say in the announcement, we stand planning to go down for breakfast. I wrap my arms around him, giving him a hug. He holds me tightly with his strong arms. His scent smells so good and so does his cologne, and his body feels perfect next to mine. I look up to him. Being this close to him, and looking up to him is a bad idea, I know that. I also don't really care. He looks into my eyes, I really want to kiss you right now, I admit. Zack smiles, me too. I move up on my tiptoes, to get closer to him. My heart is racing, and I just need him. Seeing me move in, Zack bends down meeting his lips with mine. We throw caution to the wind and spend a few minutes wrapped in each other's arms, sharing a heated kiss. It feels so good to be able to be in his arms like this. When we pull away, we take a second to catch our breath, while still holding each other close. I want more, I want all of you. I hate this, I whisper, my heart beating out of my chest. He groans, me too. 
I've never wanted anyone like I want you. Not even close, he admits. I feel the same way, I admit while making eye contact. I love you, Lauren. Is it crazy to say it this soon? He asks. I can't help but feel giddy. It's totally crazy, but we're both crazy, because I love you too, I beam. Zack pulls me in and kisses me again. This time it's slower and more tender. I move my hand to his cheek and graze my fingertips through his facial hair, and he lets out a little groan. We should go, Zack says. I nod and take a step back, and I see him readjust himself. I give him a sympathetic smile, and then he grabs my hand. I feel like I can't get close enough to him right now, so I also use my other hand to hold his arm and cuddle into him as we walk. He smiles at me and kisses my forehead. Chapter 16 Zack's point of view Lauren and I sit at the table I always sit at in the kitchen. We're joined by Paul, Malcolm, his mate Jenny, Jenny's friend Jessica, as well as Tom, and Samuel, two of my warriors. I stand to address my pack. I don't say a word, but within 10 to 15 seconds the entire room is quiet, and everyone's attention is on me. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to take a minute to make an announcement. I know a lot of you met Lauren when she came here the other day, but for those of you who weren't here on Friday, or for those that may have missed it, this is Lauren, I motion her up. Lauren officially became a member of Red River last night, I have my arm around her waist and hold her clothes, and plant a kiss on her temple. It may seem very quick, and sudden for some of you, but we all know how this works in our world, I say, and we smile at each other. I hear my pack break into applause. I give Lauren a small kiss. I look out at my pack, and I notice a few of the women looking pissed. Now this annoyed me off. I specifically didn't sleep around because I wanted my future mate to feel comfortable. This isn't going to make Lauren feel comfortable. I want all of you to welcome her, and treat her with respect, as you would treat your Luna, because that is what she soon will be, I say, firmly. Lauren is rubbing my back, and wraps her arm around my waist too, relax, baby she whispers. I smile at her. Thank you, I say, and we sit. You okay there Zach? Malcolm asks. I nod. As long as all of the pack remembers their place, and respect Lauren, I'll be fine, I snap, and turn to look at Jessica who was also looking a little sour during my announcement. She puts her head down. Lauren grabs my arm and pulls me close. Take a breath. Calm down. It might take people some time, and that's okay, Lauren reassures me. I love you, I sigh, and wrap my arms around her to breath her in. I'm smelling more of her wolf scent now. I'm sure we're mates. Her voice, her touch, it's calming me. The mate bond pull seems to be more evident each day. I love you too, she smiles. We eat breakfast, and even though I'm not pleased with some of the she-wolves, Lauren seems to be getting along well with Jenny and even Jessica has heeded my warning and is smiling and being respectful to Lauren. Even after we're done eating, we stay and hang out. Lots of members seem to want to introduce themselves to Lauren, now that they know she isn't just a friend, like I introduced her the other day. That must have some people wondering why I introduced her as a friend at first. I've never spoken as rough to the group as I did this morning, so whatever they are thinking they at least know that I am possessive and protective of her. Hi, Alpha. Is this your mate? She's so pretty. Little Sophia says. Hey Sophia. She is my mate, I think she's pretty too. Lauren, this is Sophia, I introduce them. Of course, Lauren lights up. Her love of children evident. 
Hi Sophia, it's so nice to meet you. For the record, I think you are very pretty too, she gushes. Sophia is smiling proud. Thank you Luna. Maybe you can play with us next weekend too? You'd be my first pick, Sophia beams. Lauren looks to me, brows furrowed. I play soccer with the kids on Saturday morning. Sophia was a team captain this week, and she got first pick, and she chose me first, but she's letting you know she'd choose you first next time. You took my place, I explain, with a smirk. I love that Sophia is making her feel welcome. I think it's actually really sweet that Sophia admitted she would pick Lauren first. Well, if you all would have me, I would love to play soccer with everyone, Lauren tells her. Sophia smiles even bigger. I can't wait. I have to be on your team. Sophia excitedly says. Lauren chuckles, I've got connections, I'm sure we can make that happen, Lauren says. As soon as Sophia leaves, Lauren is gushing about how cute she is. You play soccer with the kids too? She asks, smiling wide. I know, what a dreamboat, right? Malcolm mocks. You're joking, but definitely, Lauren admits, as she cuddles into me. She rests her chin on my arm, and looks up smiling at me, those hazel eyes of hers. She's so beautiful, and she's looking at me with so much affection. I move in, and kiss her perfect nose. Ah, I hear from basically everyone. They're trying to embarrass me, but I'm not having it. It doesn't bother me. Lauren just smiles wider. After breakfast, we head back upstairs. Today is Sunday so it's my day off, although I don't usually take it. That's going to change. When we get back upstairs, Lauren's phone is going off on vibrate. We both search around for it, finding it on the kitchen counter. She seems to leave it behind all the time, although she warned me she was terrible with her phone, and so did her brother. Hey mom. She answers. Sorry, I'm fine. I just got in and I just realized I didn't take my phone with me. Stop panicking every time I don't answer. I'm fine. Pause can we FaceTime after? Mom, she groans, and I see her take the phone away from her ear, and look at it, while she's leaning on the counter. She's talking to her mom, so I shouldn't be enjoying the view of her sticking out like that, but I am. See, I'm fine. I told you. Still in one piece, she says. See was that so hard? Now your loving mother doesn't have to worry. I'm glad you feel better, she responds gently. I miss you, Lauren adds. I miss you too, hun. It's so weird to be away from you. Oh by the way, Sarah dropped off some pictures the kids made for you. I guess they all miss you. I'll have to send them to you. Ah, I miss them too. That's so sweet. So, Julian called and told me about your alpha, I didn't know you two were a thing, she says. Your alpha? Did she refer to me as hers before we were even together, that feels good. What did Julian say? Lauren asks with a chuckle and looks back to me with a smile. Just that you're a smitten kitten, she giggles. I am so happy for you, Lo, she adds. Thanks ma. So are you, her mom pushes. Smitten? Yes, you'd like him, too, she assures her. Would I? She asks. Definitely. He actually reminds me of dad. He's easy to talk to, easy going, but also has that strong confidence which is comforting, she explains. I didn't know she felt that way. Wow. Does he make you feel safe? He does, she nods. 
Ah mom, don't start crying. You're going to make me cry, Lauren says. I'm just happy for you. I'm okay though, her mom adds, with a chuckle. I'm glad he makes you feel safe. I think he sounds great, and like a better fit for you. Nathan is so high on himself, I thought you were maybe paired with him to ground him a little. Make him a better person, but I didn't think he'd make you truly happy. Maybe physically with all the sparks and stuff, but emotionally, I couldn't see him giving you what you would want and need. Isn't that weird? She asks Lauren. Hmm, not really actually. I kind of get it. I feel like I felt the same way, she admits. Before I turned 18, I had no desire to talk to him, or be near him. I felt like we had nothing in common, she says, and I'm shocked to hear this, but it also feels incredible. This is not us at all, and it makes the possessive part of me feel like she was always mine. Maybe you were only fated to Nathan to get to your true mate, her mom says. What do you mean? Well think about it, would any other circumstance have made you leave Claw Moon? Running halfway across the country? What are the odds that Zack would have came all the way here too? You two never would have found each other had you not been mated to Nathan. Nathan told you he didn't want a fated mate. Maybe Moon Goddess knew Nathan would reject his mate regardless and used him to get you to the man you were meant to be with, she explains. Hmm. I like that, she says, and looks at me, smiling. I love her theory. It makes sense, and I love thinking she was always only mine. Who are you looking at? Her mom asks. Wouldn't you like to know? Lauren teases. Is he there? She asks excitedly. I walk over and lean down beside Lauren. Hello, Mrs. Crane, I smile. Hi. Call me Joan, she smiles. You weren't lying when you mentioned he was a looker, her mom adds. Lauren looks at me and rolls her eyes. Everyone has to blab about how I think you're so cute, she smiles. Cute? No. You said, and I quote, Mom, I met the guy in the entire world last night. Seriously, everything. He's ugh. <laughs> she groaned. She groaned to her mother, her mom says, and then starts laughing. Lauren looks to me smiling, she's a traitor. Don't trust her with your secrets. I can't help but laugh. I pull her clothes and kiss her cheek. I felt the same way about Lauren. I stopped breathing for a second when I first saw her, I admit. Lauren is happy to hear my confession and so is her mom. I had never been so attracted and drawn to anyone before, but I knew she was so much more than all of that though. I went to Peggy's almost every day last week. The one day that I didn't go, I wanted to but my buddy told me I would scare her off if I went every day, I explain. Lauren is laughing. I really missed you on Wednesday, she adds. The fact that she remembers which day I didn't go makes me smile. I shouldn't have listened to Paul, I add while shaking my head. Lauren's mom is smiling at us so wide. You two are definitely mates, Joan states. I agree. I notice I'm sensing her wolf more, and all of my senses are becoming more and more heightened to her. Me too, Lauren agrees. I love hearing that. It's only five more days until the next full moon. We spend a few more minutes talking to her mom, and then we say goodbye. Lauren had mentioned going to the gym earlier, but we spent all morning on the couch. We put a movie on but we spent the whole time laying together on the couch, just talking, getting to know each other deeper, and laughing about anything and everything. We also decided to forget about the whole no kissing thing. It just isn't possible. There's too much heat between us, to not even kiss. 
We had to force ourselves to cool down a few times, because it's so easy to get out of control with her. She wants it just as much as I do, so that's a dangerous combination. I don't want to hold out, but I don't want to stress Lauren or her family out with Nathan and his drama. I know I'd protect her and keep her safe, so I think we should say screw it. Literally. I hate giving him any sort of power over us. I keep those thoughts to myself because it doesn't matter how I feel. If she thinks it's best to wait, I'll respect that without trying to talk her into anything. In those heated moments, I try to take the lead and start the cooling off before things get too far. Otherwise if she pressed the matter I know I'd cave. I want her so badly, and we're meant to be together. It seems so wrong to not do what we were destined to do, because of a man who didn't deserve her. I'm starving, let's go down for lunch, I say. I can't believe you're hungry after the breakfast you ate a few hours ago, she laughs at me. I'm a bottomless pit. Are you not hungry? You barely ate breakfast, I ask. She laughs. I ate two eggs, bacon, hash browns, and pineapple and watermelon. That's a full breakfast. It just looks like very little compared to your plate, she laughs and pokes my waist. I stick my stomach out as far as I can, after her poke. She chuckles at me, and pokes me again. Then she follows suit and sticks hers out. That's adorable, I add. Yeah, she questions. It makes me imagine you pregnant with my pup, I admit seriously. Her breath hitches, and just like magnets, we move closer. I have my hands around her waist, and she has hers on my chest. Do want pups one day, she asks softly. I do. Nothing would make me happier than having a family with you. I know you're going to be such a good mom, I admit. She smiles broadly. Thanks. I've always wanted to be a mother. I know you're going to be a great dad, she adds, and moves to her tiptoes. I lean down and kiss her. I lift her up, and she wraps her legs around my waist, and it brings her to my level. Her hands make their way to my neck, and her nails gently scrape down it, making a small growl escape me. I feel her lips smiling into mine. I also feel I have an erection again. My balls are going to be so blue by the next blue moon. Not blue moon. Full moon. Damn it. I put her down, and readjust myself, and she just smirks at me. You're a little minx, aren't you? I ask. Ever since we set up that we were in a relationship, she has been so openly flirtatious. It actually takes me by surprise. I don't even recognize myself with you sometimes. I've never been as bold as I am with you she admits. Mm, I like the sound of that, I admit. I grab her hand and intertwine our fingers together, and we head down for lunch. Lunch is always served buffet style, between 11 to 2 p.m., so the kitchen isn't full when we go just after noon. Lauren grabs a veggie and dip cup, and chicken wrap. I grab three BLT sandwiches, two cookies, and a large bowl of mac and cheese. After lunch, Lauren and I walk to the treeline. We're going to shift and go for a run. I'm dying to see her in her wolf form, and for our wolves to interact. When we're hidden by the trees, I stop. Turn around, so you don't see the goods, I smirk. She laughs and we both turn our back to one another and start to undress. When I hear her unzip her pants, it takes everything in me not to turn around and see her, but I resist. Barely. When I shift, I sit and keep my back to her. I know I'll be faster than her. A minute later, I felt her push into me. I see her grey and white fur is thick, and longer than mine. She looks beautiful. 
She's a lot smaller than I am, but she still looks strong and bigger than I expected, from her 5455 human body. I can mind link her since she is a member of my pack now, so I do, you're so beautiful I tell her. Thank you. You're very impressive. You're so big, and I also love your darker coloring she says. My fur has a lot of black and gray. I basically tower over her, I'm so much bigger than her. I rub into her, and she rubs her face into mine. We take a moment acquainting ourselves with our new form before we spend a few hours running through the forest. I love that she's so fun and playful, we even chased some rabbits. I make sure to show her some of the really cool places on the pack lands, like the waterfall, the swimming hole and the view from the mountain tops. Even though it's way too cold to go swimming, Lauren considered jumping in, but I talked her out of it, it's freezing. If she would have went in, I would have had to too. We had lots of fun today, and when we head back, I feel even closer and more connected to Lauren than ever. We shift back, and get changed with our backs to each other. When we start walking back, I come clean, it took everything I had to not sneak a peek of you, behind me, I admit. She smiles, and you didn't. She asks. I shake my head, nope, I admit proudly. Wow, now you're making me feel guilty. I wasn't as well behaved as you, she smirks. Did you look? I ask, while starting to laugh. I made it clear this morning. I couldn't resist, and you didn't disappoint, she admits, with a smirk, and leans back to look at me again. I can't believe you, I laugh. Now I wish I would have taken a little peek. Why did I insist on being so gentlemanly? I joke. I figure if you're mine, I should be allowed to look when I want, she answers nonchalantly. Well. You're not wrong, I admit, and she wraps her arm around mine. She's not making this waiting any easier on me, although I'm glad to see that she feels extremely comfortable with me. Chapter 17 Lauren's point of view I wake up to a knock at my door. Come in, I call as I start stretching. I look at my clock at its 7.58 am. Zach opens my door and smiles at me. Good morning, baby. Morning, I smile and yawn. He puts my coffee down on my end table, and crawls onto the bed behind me, and holds me from behind. He breathes me in deep. I smell more of your wolf today, he admits. I've been here a few days now and living with Zach is awesome. Aside from painting ourselves with only kissing, things are great. We're crazy about each other, and each day we both notice that the closer we get to the full moon, so does the pull to each other. You work six to ten tonight? He asks. Yup, I answer. What do you think about quitting your job at Peggy's? He asks. What? Why? I move away, to turn and look at him. You're going to be Luna here soon. You don't need a job. Being Luna is a full-time job, he answers. No, it's actually not. It's more of a part-time job, I correct him. Well that's okay, he says and gives me a little kiss. I like my job, and Peggy depends on me. Plus, I would be bored with just Luna duties. You work a lot, which I totally understand but what am I supposed to do every day, I laugh. Well, what if you worked at our daycare? Really? I ask. I work all day, and you work nights at Peggy's, I don't see you as much as I'd like. Not to mention, I don't like that you're working in a bar, getting hit on, and away from the safety of the pack, he explains. I already talked to Mrs. Potter and she would love to have you. So would the kids. Plus, 
we both know how much you love working with kids, he adds with a small smile. It does suck that I'm off all day when you're working, and I have to go to work when you're off, and I really do miss working with kids, I admit and Zach is beaming now. But I would feel bad leaving Peggy. Talk to Peggy. See what she says. Maybe you can just work weekends until she finds a replacement, he adds. I nod. She can handle the weekdays by herself, it's the weekends that I would feel bad about leaving her all on her own. She went on about how much she needed the help, and how grateful she was for it, so I feel guilty. Peggy is a sweetheart, and she was there for me when I had nowhere else to go. I feel obligated to be there for her now. I want to be. I don't want to leave her stranded. I talked to Julian this morning, and he's a little worried. Nathan is being secretive, and weird so to err on the side of caution, when you work, or leave the pack house, you'll need to have a few warriors watching over you, he explains. Babe, I protest. No, I'm not taking any chances with you. I love you, he says firmly. I nod, I love you too. Oh, by the way, Julian and your mom are moving here in a week. There's a cute little two-bedroom place that's empty. Why don't I send you there with one of my construction guys, and you can pick out some paint colors. It needs new flooring, you can pick that out too, or FaceTime your mom, and she can pick it out. That way it's ready for her when she gets here, he explains. She doesn't need a two-bedroom house. A room on the third floor is fine, I assure him. He furrows his brows, no, my mother-in-law is not living in a pack house bedroom meant for young singles, he explains. I love that he just referred to her as his mother-in-law. Well, she doesn't need a two-bedroom house. She's your mother, and we're going to take good care of her. That's final, he says with a smile. You're very sweet, and she will appreciate it, I'm sure. I appreciate how thoughtful and sweet you are. I snuggle into him, and we enjoy a comfortable silence. I feel my eyes getting heavy. His scent is so soothing, and I was up late last night reading. Last night was great, but I stayed up so late. While Zach was at work, I ran down to the grocery store and picked up ingredients to bake a homemade cherry cheesecake. It needed to set in the fridge for four hours after cooling, so by the time it was ready, I would have been at work. He came home early and kept saying the house smelt so good, I had to lie and tell him it was a candle I had burned and hid the cheesecake in the bottom drawer of the fridge. He picked me up from work, and when we got home, I told him why the house was really smelling good earlier, and I dug out the cheesecake. His eyes were wide and he was so excited. So we snacked, and then we made it to the couch. Things got particularly heated, and he basically cut our night off cold turkey. He apologized but said he needed to put some space between us because he was losing control. I was just as bad as he was, maybe worse, so it took me a while before I could fall asleep. A shower didn't help. It took reading a murder mystery for five hours, to calm me down enough to sleep. Are you going back to sleep? He chuckles. I couldn't sleep last night, I was up late reading until 4.30 am, I admit. Ah. I'll bring a plate of breakfast up, and leave it in the microwave for you, he tells me. He gives me a kiss as he gets up, and I groan. What? He laughs. You're so comfy, I admit. I have a meeting in 25 minutes, he frowns. I groan and open my eyes to look at him. Give me your shirt then. He points to the t-shirt he's wearing, this one? The one that I'm wearing? He asks, one brow arched. Yes. It smells like you. Please, I pout. He pulls it off at once and hands it to me. 
My first instinct is to smile because of how sweet he is to oblige me and my pout, but then I notice his body. Wow! I say quietly. I'm totally gawking at him, but I can't help it, not that I would want to. He's beautiful. You look. Good, I admit. He's shredded and seeing the definition of his body, his arms, his chest, everything. Wow! But he just laughs at me. Come here, I want to get a better look at your tattoos, I say. Tattoos, sure, he jokes, but comes closer, and sits on the bed, I sit up, and crawl out from the blankets to get closer. I've gotten a good look at most of them before, but this is the first time I see his upper arm ones. One arm has a full sleeve, and the other arm a half sleeve from the elbow up. His torso is tattoo-less. I sit up, and he explains his tattoos. A large geometric wolf tattoo, which I couldn't see before. He said it's similar to his friend Jack's, and they got them together. There is a pocket watch face with the time being 2.42, which he says is his mother's death, as well as the flying dove he has tattooed on him. Most of the tattoos are black with some red. They're beautiful, I admit while tracing my finger along them. He smiles. You think so? You like tattoos? I didn't realize how much I liked them, until I met you, I say truthfully. He's staring at me, and then he finally breaks the silence, You're so beautiful, he says, as his fingertips glide down my cheeks. I'm a mess right now, I laugh. He shakes his head, never. I think I prefer you like this, he says with such conviction, I actually believe him. He gives me a gentle kiss, enjoy my shirt, he says and he gets up and leaves. Gosh even his back is beautiful. He does things for me. As soon as my door is closed, I pull off my PJs and put his shirt on. I have a strong desire to have every bit of my skin touch the shirt that touched him, and smelled like him, so I even take off my panties. I lay back down, and I can still feel his warmth on it, and his scent fills my lungs. It's so calming and arousing. I also just saw Zach here two seconds ago. I need a shower. I pull the shirt off and jump in the shower to take care of business. Again. I brush my teeth and head back and put Zach's t-shirt back on and slip into bed with my book. I feel so close to him like this, it's so comforting. Soon though, I'm fast asleep. Chapter 18 Lauren's point of view I wake again to a knock at my door. I look at my clock, and it says 10.26 a.m. Come in, I call. Zach opens the door. My poor sleepy girl, he coos. I came home for some paperwork and this was going off in the living room couch, he says and hands my phone to me. I see Peggy just tried to call me. MMM thanks, babe. I never sleep this late, it's the shirt, I admit. He looks down to see I'm wearing his shirt. I didn't know you wanted to wear it. That's hot, he says with a growl. Come give me a cuddle before you go, I ask sweetly. He pops off his shoes and gets into bed. For the first time ever, he gets under the blankets with me. I'm always properly clothed, and the one time I'm in a t-shirt and nothing else, he gets under the blankets. I'm not completely decent, just a warning, I admit. I'm more than fine with it but I still think I should warn him. What do you mean? I saw you had shorts on earlier, he asks. I took them off. He's already under the blankets with me, and he looks at me, with surprise. Are you joking? I shake my head and chuckle. He obviously didn't know how to take my answer with a giggle, because his hand moves to my waist and he slowly moves down to my hips to feel for shorts but doesn't feel a waistband. 
He pulls his hand away. Why aren't you wearing your shorts anymore? He asks, breathing a little heavier. Well this shirt had your warmth and smell on it, and I wanted it to touch every bit of my body, so I took off everything I was wearing, I admit. Everything. He asks. I nod, and he lets out a raspy, we were laying on our sides, facing each other, and with that bit of information, he falls to his back and covers his face. You're killing me, baby, he breathes out. I fight the urge to wiggle closer and wrap my arms around him. Instead, I reach an arm out and grab his hand. Sorry, I whisper. You give me cuddles all the time, and never come under the blankets. I've always dressed appropriately so you could too, but today with the shirt, I got carried away. Sorry. I didn't mean to make you feel like this, I apologize. I just led a few warrior classes and it was freezing out. I thought I would warm up for a minute. Don't be sorry, he answers without looking at me. So you're not wearing anything? Like not even panties? He asks, and look on his face. Why don't I just put some on really quickly, and then we can cuddle, I offer. He groans again and points to his erection. No cuddling happening right now, he adds. I was already turned on. I'm always friggin' turned on, but seeing him so turned on by me, without even touching me, and just by the thought of me is making it worse. Zack, you're turning me on, a lot, I confess with labored breathing. Zack looks at me, and when our eyes meet, it's as if there is nothing holding us apart. I'm not sure who was the first person to move but we find ourselves kissing. I'm moaning and he's groaning. It's hot and fast, and there's an urgency to it. I can feel how much he needs me, and I'm sure he can feel the same from me. I feel his hand on my outer thigh, and it slowly moves up, and soon he has a hand grasping me. Lauren. If you want to stop this, tell me to leave right now. I don't have the strength to move away from you on my own, he says while panting. His dark brown eyes now black. Don't go, I plead. I want you so bad. I'm tired of having showers, instead of you, I pant. He is hissing. He comes back down and kisses me hard. I start pulling his shirt off so he breaks away to pull it over his head. He comes back down to kiss me, and I start unbuckling his belt. He stops kissing my lips and then moves to my neck, my weak spot. I forgot about the jean buckle, because it requires too much concentration. I can't even think straight so I pull him closer, grinding into him harder. I'm moaning and I'm so wet. I'm probably making a mess of his jeans. Maybe I should care, but I don't. He pulls away and starts to lift his shirt off of me. When it's off, he takes a second to look me over. He licks his lips, you're perfect, he breathes. He gives me a quick kiss, and then makes his way to my neck. Zack, I moan. He kisses his way to the other side and continues his magic. I look down at him. I want him in a way that's so carnal. I want him for me now. I need him there. Please, I need you, Zack, I pant. I'm ready, I beg. He lets out a growl, and he starts kissing lower, and lower. Until I feel his soft warm tongue on my core. You're so wet for me Lauren you taste good, he groans and he continues his assault on me. I'm so turned on, it took about 30 seconds before I'm warning him, Zack, baby, I'm going to come, I moan, Lauren, he pants. I can't help but smile at him, I tease him a little more before I take him into my mouth. Lauren, you have to stop. I'm going to come, he says as he puts his hands under my arm and pulls me up. I wasn't done, 
I smile mischievously. He kisses me and rolls me over, so he's on top. I want to you he pants. I've always been safe before, he adds, and I nod. I can pull out if you want, he asks. I don't care. You can come inside if you want, I say, and the thought has me panting. The things you do to me woman, he says. He lowers himself and uses his hand to guide himself to me. Just as the tip grazes my opening, I let out a moan, but then I stop him. Just, take it easy, I say as I nibble my lower lip. Are you? He asks for brows furrowed. A virgin? Yeah, I answer. He looked at me wide-eyed. Really? You seemed so confident, I'm glad you told me, he smiles broadly at me. I'll be gentle. It'll hurt at first, but we'll take our time, he assures me. He starts kissing me, and I can feel him push into me slowly. He's big, and it hurts. It feels like it's burning. I wince at the pain. Take a deep breath. Don't tense up, he says. I force myself to breathe, and then he moves in a little more. Finally, he stops. You're so tight, and it feels so good, he groans. He starts kissing me, then my neck. I let him know when he can start to move again, he's being so gentle and taking it slowly. It still hurts. Soon enough, the pain is replaced with pleasure. It feels good, does it hurt? He asks. No, it feels good. He started going a little faster, don't stop, I demand. Soon I'm warning him, I'm going to. Zack. Zack. I cry out. I get lost in an earth shattering and Zack soon follows me. Lauren, he grunts as he comes undone. We spend a minute still attached, before he gets off, and lays beside me. I can't believe we did that, and I can't believe how good it was, he says through pants. I didn't know X could feel like that. I'm addicted to you, he says, with a smile. I roll to my side and steal a little kiss. I love you, he says while holding my gaze. I love you. I didn't know what to expect exactly, but it blew my expectations, I smile, and he smiles broadly at my confession. I don't want this to come out the wrong way, but I didn't think you were a virgin. I thought when we first met that it was possible, but living together, I saw a different confident, really forward and flirtatious side of you that I thought had to mean you had to have experience. And then in bed, until you told me that you were, I thought you seemed to know exactly what you were doing, and you seemed so confident, he confesses. Have you been thinking about my virtue all this time? He nods. Why didn't you just ask? I wasn't embarrassed about it. He shrugs, I don't know, it seemed like I would have been crossing a line. There seems to be this expectation within Pax that the she-wolves should be virgins, and it's fine if the men aren't. I'll admit, it ate me up a little bit thinking about anyone having you like this. I also told myself I didn't have the right to feel that though because I wasn't a virgin. I wish I would have waited for you though, he admits. Well. I'm glad that you see the hypocrisy in the expectation. I almost did once, we did other stuff, but it felt wrong, I admit. This felt so right though, I smile. So right. Is that your phone? Zack asks. I can hear a quiet buzzing, and I start looking through the blankets. I grab it and answer, me, hello. Peggy, hey darling. How are you doing? I came up to your place, but you weren't there. I was worried about you. Me? Oh, I'm fine. I'm at Zach's. Peggy, ah I see. You two are getting pretty close, aren't you? Me? 
he's actually my second chance mate. Peggy, no. Are you serious? I'm so happy for you. Me, thanks, Peggy. Peggy, he's a good egg, that one. Me, I chuckle. I agree. So why were you looking for me? Everything okay with Leon, your brother? Peggy, oh yes, he's doing fine. We actually had a pipe burst in the washroom. It should be fixed by dinner time, but the proper clean-up won't be rushed. I wanted to let you know you'd have no water for the day, and also I'm closed for the night. Me, geez, well that's too bad about the pipe. I'm glad it'll be a quick fix. I'll see you tomorrow then. If you need anything, give me a call. Peggy, will do darlin'. Ta-ta for now. I don't have to work tonight, pipe burst, I explain. MMM, I like the sound of that, he says as he pulls me in, and kisses me. I tossed my phone and sink into his embrace, smiling. I need you again, he says, his eyes black with lust. I smile and kiss him back with the same urgency, I fall on top of Zack's sweaty body. I rode him until we both found our end. It's almost 1 p.m., and we've been going at it since 10.30 since Zack woke me up a few hours ago. This was our fourth or maybe fifth round. We can't keep our hands off of each other. I don't ever want to stop being inside of you, he huffs and I smile. We need to stop to refuel though. I'm starving, I admit, as I lift my body off of his, and lay beside him. Me too, actually. I'll take a quick shower and run down and get us some lunch, he offers. He gives me a kiss, and groans as he gets out of bed, and walks out of my room. I hate to see you go, but I love to see you walk away, I holler, and he lets out a throaty laugh. I heard the shower in his room turn on, and I decided I should wash some of this sweat and me too. I jumped up and headed to his shower. I open his shower door, he smiles and pulls me in. I was missing you, he whispers. You were gone for one minute, I smile. I don't know how I'll manage to go to work all day. Wait. I was supposed to be working today, I had classes to lead. I even closed all mind link. He admits, with a laugh, and then I can tell he's probably mind linking someone. After a minute, he looks down at me and smiles. I'm covered for the rest of the day, now. Good, I say as I hug him. He hugs me back, and then grabs the shampoo and starts washing my hair. I grab the body soap and start to lather him up. It didn't take long before I was pinned against the shower wall, and we were going at it again. When we get out of the shower, Zack wraps me up in a towel and then wraps himself in one. He grabs another towel and starts drying off my hair, and his lips find my neck. He's kissing me and it feels so good. I lean back into him. Stop, before we're at it again, and miss lunch, I say, with labored breathing. He pulls away and looks up, and we're looking at each other through the mirror. He smiles, and gives me a kiss on my head, I'll go now before I get distracted again, he smirks. We leave his bathroom, and when I go to leave his bedroom, he stops me. No stay in here, he says and points to his bed. I don't have clothes in here, I remind him. He pulls me into his closet, I want to see you in nothing but my clothes today, he smiles. I chuckle but oblige him. I grab a sweatshirt and slip it on. It's so big, it's like a dress on me. He grins while he gets dressed. When Zack leaves I make my way back into my room and bathroom and grab a brush, and brush my hair, and then put a braid in it, so it's out of the way. I brush my teeth and put some deodorant on. When I hear the front door, I rush back to his room, 
and fling myself into bed, trying to not laugh. He comes into his room with two bags. What did you get? I smile. He sits and starts opening the bags. He's got sandwiches, bananas, apples, cookies, chips, Gatorade and water. While he was eating a banana, I made sure he knew proper banana eating etiquette. He looked at me like I was crazy when I said that. When you eat a banana in front of other people. Never make eye contact with anyone, I laughed. He still didn't get it. I proved how the second you make eye contact, he was roaring. We're always laughing about something, I love that about us. When we've had our fill, we cuddle up in bed and talk about the smallest of things, but it's fun and perfect. After an hour or so, we made love once more before falling asleep together. I was sore, but I wanted him so much, it didn't matter. The pleasure outweighed the pain. Chapter 19 Zack's point of view I wake up, and Lauren's head is on my chest, and I can tell by her breathing she's still sleeping. It's almost 7 p.m. now. I can't believe the day we had together. I can't believe we didn't wait. Not only did we not wait, but we went at it all day. I'm smiling uncontrollably, just thinking about how our bodies fit together, how they move together, and how they bring pleasure, unlike anything I knew was possible. We don't even have sparks yet or feel the effects fully of the mate bond, and I'm obsessed with her. How stupid was Nathan? He didn't want her? What? I know that dinner is only being served for another 30 minutes, so I slowly untangle our bodies, trying not to wake her. She stirs a little but doesn't wake. I throw some track pants on, and a t-shirt. I head down and ask the staff to wrap up a family size part of everything for me to go. I'm starving, I'm always starving, and Lauren will be when she wakes. We really worked on our bodies today. I make my way towards the exit, to head upstairs with my styrofoam containers of food when Paul calls me over. I don't want to leave Lauren long, but I walk over. What's up? I ask quickly. Where are you going? He asks. Just taking some food up, we're going to eat upstairs today, I answer without emotion. Paul starts to smirk. What? I ask straight-faced. Nothing, I just haven't seen you all day, you're missing in action, don't show up for lunch, and you're bringing food up to your place. Things must be going well for you two to be spending so much alone time together, he adds. I just roll my eyes and walk away. I make it upstairs, leave the food in the kitchen and then head into our bedroom. Lauren's eyes flutter open, as I start to crawl in bed. She smiles broadly. That smile is everything to me. Where did you go? She asks. I went down and got us some dinner. It's in the kitchen, I say and give her a small kiss. I'm hungry too, she says and does the most adorable little cat stretch. She sits up and pulls the blankets off of herself. I see her beautiful body. I wasn't expecting that when I first saw her. I watch her get up, and I see her round and her back dimples. My thoughts are interrupted when I hear Lauren laughing. I look up at her face, what? I ask. You were totally gawking at me, she smiles. Well, the way I see it. You're mine and I can look whenever I want to, I smirk, using her own words on her. Touché, she chuckles. I am all yours, she beams and then bends to grab the sweater she was wearing earlier off the floor. Babe, I growl. Seeing her bend like that got the blood flowing. She laughs and pulls my sweater on. She walks out of our room, but in the opposite direction of the kitchen. Where are you going? I'm grabbing a pair of panties. Yours would never fit, she smirks. 
We need to move your stuff in our room. We can do that later, I say as I follow her to her old room. Oh really, she asks, and I nod. Yeah, we can also go pick up the rest of your stuff at your old apartment tomorrow, I say, but it's kind of a question. I'm hoping she agrees. She can't move away from me now. We can't sleep apart. Yeah, living apart is not going to work anymore, she laughs, and what a sense of relief to hear she feels the same way. She grabs some little shorts and slips them on, and we head to the kitchen. We eat up the spread, and Lauren reminds me we have some cheesecake left. I can't believe she made this cheesecake. First, it's delicious, but I also thought it was so sweet and thoughtful of her. We enjoy our dessert as we talk and flirt the whole time. She's so fun to be around. When we're done, we tidy the mess and I insist that we move her things to our room before we do anything else. Lauren and I are packing up her stuff and I can hear her phone buzzing quietly. Your phone's ringing somewhere babe. We both start looking around, and I end up finding it between the bed and end table. It must have fallen there earlier. We didn't get it in time, and she missed the call. Her eyes are wide, and she shows me the screen of her phone. It showed 34 missed phone calls and 19 unread messages. Sadie just called, but my brother called 21 times today, and my mom called 12 times, she says wide-eyed. She opens her messages with me. One thread. Julian, Lauren. Alpha is freaking out. He says he can feel you with someone else. Did you? Again? He says he feels it again. You're not safe. Stop Zach. Lauren. Answer your phone. What? He's freaking out. Again? He sent out a search party for you. I warned you. He's ordering you be found, and dragged back to Claw Moon. I can't believe you. Stop. You're making things worse. She groans, and then opens the other text thread. Mom. Lauren. Nathan is freaking out. He says he can feel you being intimate with someone. Are you okay? Everything consensual? Haha. -ha. You go girl. Are you going to be able to walk after all this? LOL I know that your brother is freaking out, he's just worried. He doesn't understand what it's like when you find your mate. Don't let him get to you. I'm happy for you. Nathan can't have his cake and eat it too. Baby, be careful. He sent out a search party for you. Call me when you see this. She chuckles at first and then shakes her head. She starts calling her brother. Put it on speakerphone, I say, and she does. I'm not going to allow him to get mad at her. I pull her on my lap and rub her back, to calm her down, while it rings. After two rings, we hear, hello. Lauren gasps and hangs up. I look at her confused. That was Nathan, she says. Her phone starts ringing, and it says, Julian. I answer it, deciding not to use the speakerphone me, hello. I say, and I'm angry. Nathan, hello. Who's this? Where's Lauren? He growls me, Lauren is not your business anymore. You lost your chance. She's mine now. I growl Nathan, he growls she's my mate. Me, I'm her second chance mate. She loves me. I love her. Move on. Nathan, she's mine, and I won't stop until I find her. He sees I put Lauren down and walk away from her, so she can't hear what he has to say. I expect he's going to get nasty. Nathan, I'm an alpha. I'll take her. Me, I'm an alpha too, 
and I promise you that if you or anyone from your pack lays even one single finger on her perfect head, I will kill you, and anyone else who tries anything. You might have been stupid enough to let her go, but I'm not. I will wage war against your whole pack if you even try to hurt her. You don't want to mess with me. I promise you that. Go to your fiancé and leave my maid alone. I growl he hung up on me. He hung up? Did I scare him? I growl and toss her phone on the bed. I look at my minx of a mate, and she's smiling at me. Suddenly my anger is starting to vanish. Why are you smiling? I ask. That was really really, she adds while nodding her head those big hazel doe eyes of hers giving away her thoughts. Are you turned on? I ask, why died? She smiles and nods. She stands and makes her way to me. She lifts her arms like she wants me to take my sweater off of her. I do what she wants, and pull my sweater off, and there's nothing under it except those little shorts. Then she drops her shorts and steps out of them. I feel the blood rushing to my manhood. You'd think I wouldn't be able to perform any more, but when it comes to Lauren, I can't help myself. I start kissing her, and I start walking her back to the wall. When she's pinned against it, she pulls down my pants, and I lift her up. I slowly position myself at her entrance and enter her. She's soaked. We do it hard, and quick and soon we're both an unraveled mess, I carry her to the bed, and separate us, and lay her down gently. She's giving me lazy smiles, as I pepper butterfly kisses all over her face. What a flex, she chuckles. A flex? I ask. Yeah. You argued about who I belong to, and then you threatened to murder him, and then he has to feel us bang just seconds later. She chuckles. I can't help but laugh. Chapter 20 Lauren's point of view Soon my phone is ringing again, and it says, Mom. Let me answer it, just in case, Zack says. I hand him my phone, Hello, Zack says firmly. Pause. He smiles. Hi Joan, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't Nathan, I'll get you. Lauren. Me, hello. Mom, Lauren. It's good to hear your voice. Are you okay? Me, yeah, I'm good. Sorry about today. I know it was probably a mess because of me. Mom, don't be sorry. You deserve to be happy, and boy have you been happy today she chuckles. Me, I chuckle and rub my red cheeks get it out. Say what you want to say. Mom, all joking aside, he's your mate, and you two have been living together and holding out. You two were both probably losing your mind before today. Me, you have no idea. Mom, Alpha had your brother and I both in his office with him the last few hours hoping you would call one of us. So I heard the exchange between Nathan and Zach. Quite the man you got there. Wasn't expecting that from the happy sweet guy I always see during FaceTime. She laughs very strong and protective. Me, I know right. It was so hot, I sigh mom, so it was you then. I wish you could have seen Nathan's face, less than a minute after Zach tells him off, and claims you as his, his hand goes to his chest. They're doing it again. He growled. It took everything in me not to laugh. Me, you're bad, Mom. Mom, Ummy? No. You're bad. Me I burst out laughing. Anyways, change of subject. Maybe you should get out of there early. What if he decides to take his anger out on you and Julian? You both should get here sooner rather than later. Mom. Do you think so? I don't think he would do anything to us. Me, I know he always liked Julian, but I'm nervous. 
Now that Zack has threatened him, who knows what he'd do? How's Julian? Is he mad at me? Mom, why don't I talk to Julian, and I'll get back to you about leaving early? He's a little frustrated, but he doesn't understand. One day when he finds his mate, he'll get it. How long have you guys been living together? Me, this was day five. Five long painful days. Mom, plus you guys have had your eye on each other for a week before that. Nearly two weeks, and then living together too. I can't even imagine. Don't worry about Julian. I'll talk to him, and I'll also see what he thinks about leaving early. Nathan gave our phones back, but he has your number now so be aware of numbers you don't recognize. Me. Thanks, Mom. Zach, I talked to my mom again, and she talked to Julian. They are going to be leaving tonight at 1 a.m. They are both going to drive in opposite directions. Julian won't be here for a few days, and my mom is going to do the trip anywhere from 20 to 30 hours, depending on how well she can verify that no one is following her. She's going to take her time, get a hotel or two and make sure she isn't being followed. They're hoping if they both go in opposite directions, and if Julian leaves last, if they track any scent it will be his. If they follow him, they are going to be thrown off, since he's not going to be headed anywhere near us for a while. I explain. That sounds good. Maybe I should send them a security team. He asks. I think that would only hurt their chances of flying under the radar, I point out. Babe, I should be going there. He needs to die, Zack says with gritted teeth. As soon as he got off the phone with Nathan, he has been talking about killing him. Well almost right after he got off the phone with Nathan. I don't know what came over me, I should have been thinking and worrying about a hundred different things at that moment, but I wasn't. I was just turned on. He'll never find me, and I don't want innocent Claw Moon members caught in between all of this because of Nathan. In two days this will probably be all over with, I reassure him. I can see that he is frustrated. Babe, relax, I tell him, as I move into his arms. He's not mad at me, but I know he's making a compromise for me. A big one and he's not thrilled about it. I don't know how I can stay here and do nothing, he adds. Zack, I appreciate you more than you can know. That you're willing to hear me on this. I know it's not easy on you, and you hear me. You see me. I hate that you're upset. I just don't want anyone to get hurt. These people were my people. If the roles were reversed and Jack wasn't Alpha all of a sudden, would you want to fight and kill all of the people that you grew up with? I press. He's thinking it over, no, but if they threatened you, yes, and a small growl escapes him. The pack didn't threaten me. Chances are most don't even know I was his mate, or what's going on. You can understand where I'm coming from, can't you? I'm pleading with my eyes for him to understand. I do. I hate that I do, but I can't live like this forever. I can't relax if I think someone wants to hurt you, he presses. It won't be, I try and assure him. It's starting to get late, we should get some rest. I nod, I'm exhausted too, I smirk. We get ready for bed and I change into one of Zack's t-shirts and crawl into bed next to him. MMM you look so cute in my clothes, Zack growls. I snuggle into him and nestle as close as I can in his arms. I want to mark you, Zack whispers as we lay in the dark, waiting for sleep to overcome us. Me too. After the full moon, I yawn. So I can mark you after midnight, early Saturday morning. He asks. Sounds perfect, I answer and give him a kiss. I love you, Lauren. 
so much, he says. Love you too, so much, I get out before sleep takes me over. Nathan's point of view how could she have moved on so quickly? I might have Blair, but I still can't get Lauren out of my head. Maybe she can't get me out of her head too. I think about her when I'm screwing Blair, maybe she's imagining me when she's sleeping with him. Even if she isn't thinking about me, I still have the physical advantage. We still have sparks for two more days until after the full moon. If I can get to her before then, maybe I can convince her? Even if I'm too late, we were destined to be together, that has to mean something. Was I too quick to let her go? She's weak. She wouldn't make a good Luna. Her alpha boyfriend sounds strong, and he wants her. Why does he think she'll be a good Luna? What does he see? Or is he just weak and blind now too? Maybe he has a weak pack and no ambition? If I could just FK her, I'm sure I could get her out of my head, and if I couldn't, she could be my mistress. I need Blair because she's got alpha blood, and I need strong pups and a strong Luna. Lauren isn't Luna material. I've sent several search parties out for her. I'm keeping tabs on her family. I don't care how long it takes, I'll find her. I don't care what threats her Alpha has. Alpha, no movement from her brother, and mother, my beta updates me while looking at the tablet screen. It was brilliant to add the tracker app to their phones while you confiscated them, waiting for Lauren to call. I can't see them staying here if she's dating another Alpha, my beta says. I nod. But. Alpha, is it worth it? Maybe you should let her go? If your purpose is to grow the pack, why would you risk a battle with this Alpha? He asks. Did I ask you? You are not the Alpha of this pack. This is my pack. You also don't become feared and respected by walking away from a fight and allowing someone to take what's yours. That makes me look weak, I hiss. He lowers his head. I'm sorry, I didn't mean any disrespect Alpha. You're excused, I say with the flick of my hand. I don't need anyone to understand, or question me on this. What kind of Alpha would I be if I didn't take what was mine? Lauren is mine, and I'll take her. Julian's point of view Mom, you leave now, and I'm going to leave in 15 minutes. I want to make sure no one is following you, I tell her. It's 1 a.m. Drive at least 4 hours before you stop for your hotel, I remind her. She gives me a hug, and we agree to keep in contact. After 15 minutes I leave. I decide to take a hotel after driving for two hours in the opposite direction. I don't want them to lose me. Lauren's point of view Lauren. Lauren. Wake up. I open my eyes to an excited Zach. I'm up. I say with one eye open. Do you feel this? He laughs. I still my body and concentrate. I can feel the smallest tingling sensation where our skin is touching. Mate bond is getting stronger, I say excitedly, suddenly feeling wide awake. He pulls me close, while we laugh, excitement bubbling from both of us. I never noticed it when we were awake talking to my mom and Julian last night. About 40 hours left until the full moon, we're both so excited for things to be official. How are you feeling this morning babe? Zach asks. Sore. Everywhere, I laugh. I'm sore because of our continuous love making yesterday. He smiles, staying away from you is going to be so hard now that I know exactly what I'm missing. I'm going to take such good care of you, so you can feel better soon, he coos. I move from cuddled beside him and crawl on top of him. We just have to be gentle, and hopefully I'll feel better for, not gentle very soon, I smirk as I kiss him. 
Baby, I don't want you to be even sorer, he pulls away and stares into my eyes. I'm not abstaining now, after waiting for what felt like forever, I say firmly. I want you, I pout and start to grind into his morning erection and he curses. Are you sure, he asks, looking concerned. I'm positive. I start to kiss his neck, moving down to his marking spot. He lets out a throaty groan, and I smile. I got him. His hands start lifting off his t-shirt that I am wearing, and I lift myself off of him, and he shimmies his boxer briefs off. Lay down, I want to bury my face between your thighs, he groans. The man seriously loves going down on me. We don't have a lot of time until breakfast, and I'm dripping wet, so I refuse. That's not necessary, I smirk. I want to. I really want to, he breathes out. I raise myself and push him inside of me. He growls. I told you I wanted you, I moan. My heart is beating out of my chest, and the feeling of him inside of me feels so good it's making me dizzy. Zack mutters a curse under his breath, as I sit up, and place my hands on his chest, and slowly ride him. He rubs my clit as a grind into him. Soon enough I feel my body inching closer. Zack, I cry out. Yeah baby, come for me, he says, and he's looking at me with so much love in his eyes. His brows are drawn together, as I cry out, Lauren. I lay there catching my breath for a minute before climbing off. So are we trying to get pregnant? Maybe we should think about birth control if we don't want a baby, I chuckle. Putting a pup inside you sounds good to me, he states. Are you serious? I wouldn't have come in you if I didn't want a baby with you, he adds. What about you? How do you feel about it? You know I love kids and I know you do too. I just wasn't expecting you to want to so soon, I admit. I love you, and I'm ready. So we're just going to let it happen? Never use protection. I ask. I'm good with that if you are. Okay, I'm good with that too. Let's hit the shower. You're sore. Let me carry you, Zack says and I laugh but wrap my arms and legs around him, and he carries me to the shower. Join our Facebook and WhatsApp group for more updates, link is given in description.